What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp plugin tutorial for you. So um, in this video tutorial, we're gonna use the extension Make Fur in conjunction with the sandbox tools to create some mountains and uh, to randomize some trees across the mountains. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna create our mountains using, using the sandbox. And so to do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna um, activate the sandbox tools um, and you should be able to do that in the extension manager. Those are built in as a part of SketchUp, but we're gonna use the sandbox tools and then make fur um, in order to do this. So we're gonna start off and you're gonna come in here and there's an option that says from scratch in the sandbox tools. So you're gonna click on that and uh, down here on the bottom, it uh, asks you for some grid spacing and um, it's spacing your grid at 10 feet right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a 500 foot by 500 foot grid and I'm just typing in 500 foot hitting enter and then typing in 500 foot again to give it the width and then the length and so that's gonna come in here and that's gonna create your sandbox um, grid just like this and so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're going to double click inside the sandbox so that we can edit it so once we're inside the sandbox you're just gonna come in here with the smooth tool just like this and you want to make sure you don't have any geometry selected when you do that but you can see how now I've got this circle in here where I can like click and drag to move geometry around and you can also come in here and type in like a hundred feet to make this circle bigger so you can type in lengths to do that um, and that kind of thing and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna kind of add some detail um, to kind of our mountainscape here so just add some hills and stuff like that you can make these as tall or as not tall as you want you can also make some of them kind of drop down I'm just kind of clicking and dragging up and down with this just like this so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna download a tree component to spread around so you're just gonna go to file 3d warehouse and click get models and what we're gonna do is we're gonna search for 2D trees. So we're gonna type in in the search 3D warehouse. Um, when that comes up, just type, type in here 2D trees. And it's gonna pop up a whole bunch of different stuff. You wanna uncheck the box that says models so that you're just searching for collections, just like this. And then you can scroll down in here and if you search 2D trees, uh, you should be able to find this 2D trees 2015 by SketchUp. So you're just gonna find that and you're gonna come in here and you're gonna select a tree that you like. So um, in this case, there's like this semi-realistic pine tree which you could use, or you could use one of these like schematic pine trees or schematic fir trees or really whichever one you like. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna select the 2D schematic fir tree. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna go ahead and click download. That's gonna allow me to bring this into my model. So, and when I download that, you're gonna come in here and you're just gonna place it just like this and um, from a scale standpoint the, this tree's a little big for the uh, sandbox that we drew because we didn't really draw a giant sandbox so I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna double click and I'm just gonna resize it a little bit so I'm gonna drop it down to about half the size that it was and then I'm gonna move it back so that it's kind of um, right on top of the origin or the uh, axes of my component like this and this is just making sure that it's centered inside the component group all right so now that we've got our 2d tree um, imported into this model and uh, one thing you may want to do is you may want to come in here and edit this component real quick to make it a face me component um, so to do that you're just going to come over to the component section of your tray click the drop down click in model and uh, this 2d schematic fir tree is going to show up in that list just right click on that and um, select properties and select always face camera and you can see how now that becomes a 2d face me component that will always face your camera so if you rotate your camera angle then uh, you don't see the side of the tree it's always facing you so and once we do that we need to go ahead and get our um, our uh, mesh in here ready for the trees and so what I mean is right now if you go in here and you select this and you select all these different faces what make 
what make fur is going to do is it's going to spread this across every one of these faces so instead of like averaging across um, this entire mesh what it would do is it would take every one of these boxes and it would try to spread a whole bunch of trees inside each one of these faces because the way this works is it comes in here and it works with um, the actual face and that's how it uh, determines how many objects it's going to create so all we're going to do is we're going to come in here we're going to click or uh, we're going to double click inside this group um, you're going to hit control a or drag a box across this to select everything and then you're just going to come in here to the soften edges command down here at the bottom and you're just kind of going to kind of drag it to the right and really you can probably drag it all the way it doesn't all you want is you see how it's coming in here and it's turning the geometry into hidden geometry in here and it's also kind of smoothing the faces just like this well you want to check check this smooth normals box and also the soften coplanar box and what you're going for here is you want this to be a single face when you select it because when it's a single face you can come in here and you can say okay across this entire face I want you to spread a whole bunch of trees instead of it saying oh I've got 500 faces selected and I want to spread trees on every one of them so now I've got the single face in here just like this so once you have that, once you've kind of softened everything uh, and smoothed it just like this, you want to go ahead and click on this face. And what you're going to do is you're going to activate the Make Crowd option in the Fur Tools toolbar. So just click on this last option right here, and uh, it's going to come in here, and it's going to give you a few options. So it's going to give you an option for how dense you want this to be. Um, it's going to ask for a size jitter percentage. What that means is it's asking how much it wants you want to randomize the size of your components just like this and then a uh, stand up just means um, that you want these to be straight up and down components instead of them kind of being perpendicular to the faces because you want your trees to be up and down you don't want them kind of like facing off at weird angles just like this and then the last thing you're going to do is it's got a list of all the components in your model and you're just going to select one. So in this case, you're going to check the box for this 2D schematic fir tree, just like this. So now you're telling it, we're going to make a crowd across the face I have selected and we're going to spread this 2D object across just like this. So and if you come in here and you edit something, like if you type in like a 0 0.9 in the density, it should give you a little preview in here of how many of these it's going to create. So, um, and I find that the preview doesn't always spread across the face like I would like it to. But before we click make crowd, we're going to go ahead and save our model because what this is going to do is this is going to come in here and create a whole bunch of geometry. So go up here and save your model before you do this. And I'm actually going to come in here now that I've saved this and I'm going to turn my density down to a 0.1. Um, just to kind of see what that generates so it's always a little bit better to come in here and go kind of light on your spreading instead of heavy um, because if you go heavy and you create just a ton of geometry in here then uh, that starts to get a little problematic um, because you get so much geometry in here that your model just doesn't work very well anymore so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down to a point one I'm gonna go ahead and click the make crowd button and see what happens you can see how down in the bottom it tells you how many polygons it's making so as long as you don't click on this you can kinda of see what the process is so it's making the polygons right now and then it kinda of dropped those trees in here so you can see it dropped a bunch of these 2d tree options in here so actually even point one is probably a little bit heavy for what I want here so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna type in like a 0 0.05 instead of a 0.1 and then come in here and click make crowd and see what that does so you can see again how many polygons it's creating and uh, it's gonna drop these into my model just like this so you can see how now it came in here and it spread this across these hills and uh, it did a pretty good job of kinda of randomizing where it put them and everything like that you can see how these are definitely in here at random um, you know, and one thing I would have probably liked to see a little bit more, and so I'm going to hit undo and do this one more time, is I'm going to go ahead and turn this uh, size randomization up to like a 40% and then try it again and see what that does. Um, and again, I'm kind of trial and erroring this thing, but it's always better to start with a low density and do kind of trial and error and uh, kind of go from there and I like that a little bit better um, you can see how some of these trees are a lot smaller than others so it kind of randomized the way this looked so you could come in here and you could fool around with this and uh, the other thing you could do um, when you're working with your mesh is 
you know, if you had like a house or something like that, like a house pad that you wanted to put in here, um, before you do this, you could use like drape or something like that. So if I draw a line straight up and down, just like this, and all I'm doing is I'm just kind of creating what, what a house pad would kind of look like. So if you were to come in here and you were to um, stamp a house pad on top of this uh, object just like this, and I'm gonna move this down a little bit until it's kind of right above. I'm gonna move it until it's right above this face, just like this. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna select the. Uh, I'm gonna select the stamp object. And so what stamp does is it'll take the face that you have selected and you can click on this mesh, just like this. And you can see what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to kind of stamp like a house pad, like a flat piece in here just like this and so like if you come in here and you do that you could draw like a house model or something like that on top of this and then you could click on the remaining face and then you could use make make crowd and so by doing that you could come in here and you could create a house on top of this and then spread all your trees just like this and you can see how it doesn't spread them across this face so you could bring in some pretty cool models just like this and uh, you could really kind of create an object that actually sits up here in the trees so there's a lot of different options and stuff like that you can do with this but um, it's just kind of a general overview of how to come in here create kind of your terrain and then create a forest on your terrain so anyway that's where I'm going to end today's video uh, leave a comment below let me know what you thought did you like this is this something you might see yourself using I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys uh, if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to sub click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you really like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That'll just help me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.